Hello everyone, welcome back to My Chem Corner. So in today's chapter, we're going to learn another topic from solutions. So before we move into the video, if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you receive notifications as and when I upload my video. So without further ado, let's get started. So in today's topic, we're going to learn about vapor pressure of liquid solutions. So in the previous videos, we've learned about solubility of a gas in a liquid and solubility of a solid in a liquid. In this chapter, in this video, we're going to learn about vapor pressure of a liquid solution. So here we are going to consider vapor pressure of liquid in liquid solutions where we're considering two liquids to be volatile. So we're taking two liquids in this case, component one and component two, and we're going to consider them to be a volatile liquid. A volatile liquid meaning any liquid which would vaporize when kept open in air. For example, if I'm talking about acetone, acetone when I keep open in air, it's going to just vaporize. If I keep ethanol open in air, it's just going to vaporize. So these kind of solutions or liquids which can vaporize when kept open in air without any external factor, those things are going to be called as volatile liquids. Now, when both these liquids are placed in a closed container, so I'm going to mix both these liquids and place them in a closed container. Over time, what will happen? There will be reaction from the liquid phase to the vapor phase, right? Because when you're talking about uh, mixing two liquids, both having volatile nature, obviously there will be some of the solutions going to the vapor phase and some coming back to the liquid phase. So this will keep continuing till a point where equilibrium is attained. Now equilibrium meaning you will have a point where both the liquid phase and the vapor phase will be the same. There is no change in it. That is when you say that equilibrium has attained. The reaction will no longer move forward. Now, when that happens, the total vapor pressure is considered to be P total. Just assuming it to be P total. And individual component has its respective pressure which can be named as partial pressure. So that is given as small P1 and P2. They are both under small letters. Now each of these vapor, these uh, component 1 and 2 will also have a mole fraction. So we are giving that as x1 and x2. Now it was Raoult who gave a relationship between mole fraction and vapor pressure and he's brought about certain laws. So let's see what that is. So based on Raoult's law, for a volatile liquid it states that partial vapor pressure of each component is directly proportional to mole fraction present in the solution. So which means to say that the partial vapor pressure is directly proportional to this x1 or p2 is directly proportional to x2. So that way we can write down this, this equation p1 directly proportional to x1 or p2 directly proportional to x2, any one. Now to remove that proportional from the equation, you are adding p1 naught for both the equation. If you are writing p1 directly proportional to x1, then we can say p1 is equal to p1 naught into x1. Or if you wrote it for P2, you can write P2 is equal to P2 naught into X2. Number this particular equation as equation number 1. We are going to come across this later also. Now, what are this P1 naught and P2 naught and all of that? P1 naught is nothing but vapor pressure of the pure component 1. And P2 naught is nothing but vapor pressure of the pure component 2. Alright. So, this is what you learn uh, uh, when you look at Raoult's law. Now, when you always learn about pressure with respect to gases or liquids, you will come across Dalton's law of partial pressure, right? So according to that particular law, total pressure over the solution phase, because they are volatile solutions, there will be some, some particles moving from the solution phase to the vapor phase. So there what will happen? There is some pressure exerted on the surface of the solution. So which means there is some pressure there. So that pressure over the solution phase will be the sum of partial pressure of the components of the solution. It is basically talking what your Dalton's law is also talking about. If you want to calculate what is the total pressure present on that solution phase, you need to take a sum of individual partial pressure of the components in the solution. So which means P total is equal to partial pressure of the first one plus partial pressure of the second one, which are the partial pressure of the components. And we're going to name this, name them as equation number two. 
Then what you're going to do is you know what the value of P1 is. You know what the value of P2, which we learned in the previous slide. Instead of having P1 and P2, we're just going to substitute what their equations were in this. So we are going to substitute equation number 1 in equation number 2. Now when we do that, instead of having P1, I just learned that P1 is equal to P1 not into X1. And P2 is equal to P2 not into X2. So instead of having P1 and P2, I have just substituted that value here. Now, when I look at this particular equation, I can no longer uh, solve it. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to bring about a relation between x1 and x2. We've always done uh, mole fraction problems. We know that when we know what the mole fraction of one component is, the other mole fraction can be calculated 1 minus the second mole fraction. Same thing here. So, once you get that, instead of having x1 over here, I'm going to substitute 1 minus x2. So, I've done that in this case. Now, when I further simplify it, I am going to get my final equation here. P total is equal to P1 naught plus P2 naught minus P1 naught into X2. That is after I simplify this entire equation and taking the common term out, I'm going to end up getting this final equation here. All right, now that I'm going to name that equation as equation number three. So that is the equation I get when I try to do... Um, the vapor pressure of a solution using Raoult's law. Now, from that particular equation, what not conclusion can you draw? So here we can say that total vapor pressure of the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of the component 2. Here you have total pressure, it's going to linearly vary with x2, which is your mole fraction of component 2. Now, depending on the vapor pressure of your component 1 and 2, total pressure of the solution decreases or increases with increase in mole fraction. So that means to say again your total vapor pressure is going to depend on your mole fraction. If mole fraction is increasing, vapor pressure is also going to increase. If mole fraction decreases, vapor pressure is also going to decrease. Alright, so those were some of the conclusions that you draw from that particular equation that you just derived in this case. Alright, so now... When you look at a plot of P1 and P2 versus mole fraction X1 and X2, it's going to give you a linear plot. And that is a particular graph. So what you see on the left hand side is for mole fraction 1. And what you see on the right hand side is for mole fraction 2. And here on the X axis we have vapor pressure. So here these lines 1 and 2 pass through points for which X1 and X2 are unity. So we have P1 here passing through where X2 is at unity 1. We have P2 which is passing where X1 is 1. That is why in the equation whenever we have P1 we have X2. This is the very purpose. Now P total vary versus mole fraction is almost linear. We know this one. When you look at P total in this case it is almost linear to mole fraction. It's not exactly linear but it's almost linear because this one is a slanted line. Slightly slanted but you can consider to be almost linear. Now, if y1 and y2 are mole fractions in the vapor phase, then by using Dalton's law of partial pressure, we can say that pressure of the component 1 is equal to mole fraction of component 1 into P total. So, this y1 and y2 are the mole fractions when a solution is in the vapor phase. Right? So, what we did is we just tried to modify that equation. Same thing here, P2 is equal to y2 into P total. So, y1 and y2 are mole fractions in the vapor phase. So now we have seen across uh, throughout the entire topic that we have learned about P1 naught, P2 naught, P1, P2, Vx1, Fy1 and all of that. What do they mean? So when you are talking about P1 naught and P2 naught, they are talking about vapor phase in the liquid, vapor pressure in the liquid phase. So in the liquid phase also there is some sort of a vapor pressure. That is denoted as P1 naught and P2 naught. When you are talking about vapor pressure in the vapor phase, you are talking about P1 and P2. Similarly, when you are talking about X1 and X2, you are talking about mole fraction in the liquid phase y1 and y2 is talking about mole fraction the vapor phase. So these terminologies will give you an idea of what kind of phase am I referring to when I talk about P1 naught and P2 naught. What is the phase am I referring to? Is it liquid phase or is it vapor phase? Alright, so that was pretty much about the theory part in which you have all these, um, uh, what do you say, vapor pressure or mole fraction in. Now based on this we have a problem. So here the problem says vapor pressure of a chloroform and dichloromethane at 298 Kelvin are two pressures are mentioned. You need to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution prepared by mixing 25.5 grams of CHCl3 and 40 grams of CH2Cl2. There is a question given, the second question, 
calculate the mole fraction of each component in the vapor phase. So there are two questions given here. One is to calculate vapor pressure. That's total vapor pressure. The other one is to calculate mole fraction. The question may seem complicated, but it is simple if you put down what is given to us and what is asked to us. So here, what is given to us? It clearly says vapor pressure of chloroform and dichloromethane, which means it is P1 naught and P2 naught. You're talking about liquid phase, right? So here you're writing 200 mmHg and 415 mmHg respectively. Then what is given to us is the weight, 25.5 and 40 grams. So in this case, what is important to us to calculate the first question, which is total vapor pressure. So the formula here is total vapor pressure is equal to P0, P1 naught plus P2 naught minus P1 naught into X2. So when we have all this, we have P1 naught, we have P2 naught, what we are supposed to calculate is total vapor pressure. But do we have X2 directly? No. So we need to track back and we are going to calculate. For mole fraction, what all do we need? We need number of moles. For number of moles, we need individual mass. Individual mass is given to us, but mol molar mass is not given. So what we are going to do is, first thing, we are going to calculate what is the molar mass of CHCl3 and CH2Cl2. So here CHCl3, individually you are going to calculate it. And for CH2Cl2 also, we are going to calculate what is the molar mass. If you don't know how to calculate the molar mass, I have done a detailed video about this quite earlier when I did the first year portions. In that, I have showed you a detailed video of how you are going to calculate molar mass for simple compounds. Kindly look at that video so that you will understand how to calculate it. Now, once you know what the molar mass is, we have the given mass in the question. You can find out number of moles very easily. So number of moles is equal to given mass divided by the molar mass for each of this compound. So now we know what the number of moles is. It's easier for us to calculate what is X2. X2 is nothing but calculating the mole fraction of CH2Cl2. So number of moles of CH2Cl2 divided by total moles of the entire solution. When you calculate this, you will get what is the mole fraction of that particular compound. Now you know what is X2. It's easy for us to put this value in the equation back and calculate what the total pressure is. So now total pressure is equal to P1 naught is 200 that's given to us in the question plus P2 naught is given to us in the question 415 minus 200 which is P1 naught into X2 is just what we calculated right now which will give us what the total pressure is. That clears our first question which says calculate vapor pressure. Now we need to calculate what is the mole fraction of the components in the vapor phase. When you talk about vapor phase you need to calculate what is Y1. Right? Now for that Y1 we need to know a few things previous to that. So P1 is equal to Y1 into P total. P total we just calculated. It's easy. Y1 is what we have to find out. P1 is not given to us. But we have a question where we can relate it to P1 naught and calculate what is P1. So the equation here is P1 is equal to P1 naught into X1. P1 is what we have to calculate. P1 naught is there in our question. X1 we can just calculate over here from the X2 value. So when we know what these values are, just substitute it. P1 naught is 200, X1 is 0 0.3112. When we simplify, you get a pressure over here. Put that pressure in the previous equation here, which is to get the Y1 value. So Y1 is equal to P1 by P total. Y P, P1 is what you just calculated. P total we calculated earlier. When you substitute, you will get what the mole fraction of component 1 is. Similarly, when you do for component 2, P2 is equal to Y2 into P total. We don't know what is P2. So when we calculate, we'll write P2 is equal to P2 naught into X2. Now in this case also, we know what is P2 naught. It's in the question 415 into X2 is what we just calculated. When you substitute, you will get P2. Substitute that P2 over here and get the Y2 value and you get the mole fraction of component 1 and 2 in the vapor phase. So here if you see the uh, if the problem solving is easier, it's just about calculating the molar mass, then kind finding out the number of moles and then calculating what your mole fraction is, substitute back in the equation and find out what your total pressure is. So the entire problem is easy. Only thing you need to track back and find out what you're supposed to calculate. So if you look at the question, do not panic. Sometimes the question may seem complicated, but when you solve it, it is easy. It is just the basic way of solving the problem. All right. So now that we know how to calculate this problem, let's move into the next topic, a smaller topic, which is vapor phase, vapor pressure for solution of a non-volatile solute in a volatile solvent. 
So here it says you are talking about the vapor pressure of a solution. Same as the previous topic. But in that case you took both volatile liquids. In this case I am taking my solute to be non-volatile and my volatile solvent. Now, when I have this non-volatile solute dissolved in a volatile solvent, obviously vapor pressure is there. It is only because of that particular solvent. Solute is completely non-volatile, so obviously there is no pressure there. No vapor pressure. But the vapor pressure is only because of the solvent, because it is volatile. Now, surface of the solution is occupied by the non-volatile solute. So, what you can do is imagine you have a beaker in which you have a volatile solvent. So that when you add a non-volatile solute, the surface has been occupied by that non-volatile solute. Now what is happening when the surface is occupied by the non-volatile solute? It will not allow the volatile solvent to escape easily to the vapor phase. It is blocking it. Right? So what is happening? The vapor pressure is going to be lower than the solvent. Okay? Now, for a solution of a non-volatile solute in a volatile solvent, there is a way in which Raoult's law can be stated. So here it says relative lowering of vapor pressure. Why do we say relative lowering? It's because when you compare it with the volatile solvent, the vapor pressure of the given uh, reaction is going to be much lower than the solvent. That's why we call it as relative lowering because you're trying to relate and learn it with the solvent. So you call it as relative learning of vapor pressure. Well, that is equal to mole fraction of the solute when solvent alone is volatile. So it's completely dependent on that solute which is present over that solvent. Okay, so that is all about vapor pressure of a solute, of a solution, non-volatile solute in a volatile solvent. So just talking about those, um, what do you say, concept where you can just think about it uh, and you're able to try and, try and relate it and study the entire theory. Alright, so I hope this video has been helpful for you and you're able to understand the concept. In case you have any doubts, please feel free to drop in an email to the email ID mentioned in the description box below or you can drop down your comments in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.